YouTube family, what's good? It's your boy Enrico the Bob, and today we're back with yet another video. In today's video, I will be doing a major transformation. So basically, this is a super exciting one. We've been hyping it up for the longest of the for the longest of time. Uh, my boy Shahid has been wolfing. The last time he spoke, he said it was seven weeks. So that was about a week ago. So you can say he's been wolfing for about eight weeks. Boom. Two plus two is four. Minus one. That's three. Quick maths. So yeah, he's been putting in a whole bunch of work. So the sun's gonna be crazy. It's been a whole bunch of hype around this cut. There's a whole lot of pressure. So we've been hyping it up on Twitter, you know, it's been going, we've been going back and forth, him and I, so it's finally the day. Um, it should be arriving in about 30 minutes. I just got here a bit earlier, came to sort the shop out, you know, get everything nice and fresh. Plus, shout out to my boy Ashley, um, aka the Faded Barber. He hooked me up with a fresh cut yesterday and he hooked me up with this amazing, this wild mat. I really love it. I've been looking, I've actually been looking for this mat for the longest of time. So yeah, shout out to the Faded Barber, super cool barber, go and check out his new barber shop, it's in Glen Vista, um, I'll definitely drop the, the location in the bio. So yeah guys, we're gonna just wait for Shiro to come through, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit this major transformation, let's go. Mr. Shiro has arrived guys. This is the end of the eight and a half, nine week wolf. Eight and a half, nine. So let's go ahead and jump straight into today's tutorial. As you can see today we are doing a drop skin fade with 180 degree waves. So basically, if you are new to my channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Definitely leave a comment and a like after the video. Let me know how you feel about the content. So first off, we're gonna comb our client's hair out. It's very important with waves, especially you need to get the hair off of the scalp. So that when you do run the clipper blades through um, your client's hair, when you are um, deep bulking, it's much easier to do so and you get a... Uh, a, cl a cleaner crisp finish next up so firstly I'm gonna start with my number two guard my client asked for number two guard um, around his head and then a number three around the crown so first off I'm starting with the number two guard I'm going with the grain continuously um, I'm also following my client's hair growth pattern because I don't want to cut against anyways then it will leave a patch so I want to make sure that I am always going with the grain. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my number 3 guard, I'm gonna start cleaning up around my client's crown. So basically we use a higher guard around the crown because it's very, it's much lighter around the crown, it's very thin. So we use the number 3 guard because we wanna try and keep the area as dark as possible and we wanna make sure that um, everything blends. So we, if we use a number 2 around the crown, it will really make the hair look much lighter around that area and we really don't want that. So we try and keep it as dark as possible around the crown so that's why we always use one guard higher next off I'm just taking my 1.5 guard and I'm basically just making sure that all the hair is laying down making sure that it's laying down nice and neatly now I went ahead with my number one guard I have my liver entirely open so what I'm doing is I'm just debulking I'm just clearing up the bottom area so that when I do start fading it's much easier for me to do so so even when I'm sitting in my guidelines I have more space to work with uh, or a much much shorter way to work with instead of having um, to fade from such a, a thick amount of way 
So I'm just gonna take my number one guard lever open and I'm gonna set in my final, this will basically be my final transition point. So I'll call it my final guide. So I'm basically just setting in my final guide and we're gonna start with the next step. Now I'm back with my wild magic clips, my wild cordless magic clip. Um, I have my lever closed entirely and I turn my clip around. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically set in our first our zero guideline. So as you can see behind the ear, my guideline has a bit of a drop because I want to try and keep the, the fade as low as possible because I want to make sure that at the transition point you can see as much of a transition possible so um, I still want it to be nice and dark in that area so what I'm doing is I'm setting in a bit of a guideline and I debulk set in the next side debulk so I'm gonna leave the bottom area for last So now um, I'm gonna go ahead with my wild detailers and I'm gonna take um, I'm gonna clean up the bottom the bulk area that I, I had left behind with the step before this. I prefer to use my detailers, they give me a much closer finish, a much closer cut, so I really prefer to use my detailers when I am cleaning up the zero area. So I'm back with my wild magic club. I'm gonna set in our first guide. So basically we're gonna go ahead with our lever open entirely. <clears throat> so basically we're gonna go with our lever open entirely and we're gonna set in our first guide. We wanna try and keep this guide line as tight as possible. We don't wanna make it too big, so it's about half an inch. We're gonna make sure that the guide line is even on both sides as well as the back. And you can see I'm going over it a few times just to make sure that the head is even and it is at the half length so now what I will start doing is I'll gradually close my lever until I'm back on the zero and we are doing this because we want to get rid of our first zero guideline that we have created so we'll start with our lever open and we'll gradually close it until our lever is closed once again So now for the next step, I have my number one guard on, I have my lever open entirely. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that the hair is nice and laid. So that when I do start fading, it's easier to do so. So now I have my lever open and I'm starting to um, fade out that bottom guideline over there. So I'm starting with my lever open and I'm gradually working my way down to my lever being closed. Next off, I'm gonna go with my 0.5 guard. I'm gonna start off with my lever open and same step as previously. You know, start with our lever open and gradually work our way to our lever being closed. And as you can see, I'm really using the corners of my blade. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with no guard with my lever open entirely. I'm going to continuously use the corners of my blades and I'm going to start um, basically detailing. I'm getting rid of any dark areas that I see. So I'm using the corners of my blades to get rid of those dark spots. Now I'm just cleaning up. Um, I'm sitting in the C cup. I just do this. I always do this when I am doing, uh, when I am cutting a waiver, especially if he's doing this type of haircut. 
it just gives me um, a, a clear view of the cut so it almost looks done and basically brings the cut together so it makes it easier for you to see any imperfections and any spots that you need to focus on so now i have my number two guard on my lever closed and all i'm doing is i'm flicking at that final guideline at the top over there and next off i'm gonna go at i'm gonna go at that same guideline with my 1.5 guard on lever open and i'm gradually gonna work my way down to my lever being closed once again So basically you'll notice that um, for the back and the other side I won't be using the same steps that I did use on this one side here. So Shahid and I haven't seen each other for a while so we're catching up. You know I got a bit carried away in the conversation and you know I just switched a few steps up. So basically now I have my, one, my number one guard on, my lever open and I'm debulking the bottom line. As you can see I'm laying down the hair with my number one guard going back at it with my lever closed next off I'm gonna go grab my number 1.5 my 0.5 guard I'm gonna start off with my lever open and as you can see I'm using a flick motion and I'm really focusing on using the corners of my blades so now I'm just gonna take my number 2 guard and I'm gonna start softening up the bulk guideline at the top where we want our transition Make sure that your lever is closed when you are detailing. Now I've got my number 1.5 guard. As you can see at the bottom there is a bit of a thick guideline. So we're just going to work our way down from our number 2 guard. And just slowly work our way down back to our number 1 guard. As you can see it's happening right now. Back onto my number 1 guard. Using the corners of my blades. And my lever is closed. Now I have my 1.5 guard and we're gonna just go ahead and soften that bottom bulk line that you see there. We're gonna start with our lever open and we're gonna close our lever. You'll actually see me switching back and forth from my lever being open to it being closed. And I'm really fo and as you can see I'm really using a flick motion and focusing on just using the corners of my blades most, most importantly. So I'm back on my number one guard, lever open, and as I move closer to the back of the fade. I do um, gently or slowly close my blades um, until my lever is, back, is closed once again. So basically now I'm just going right around the entire cut, I'm just doing some detailing, really focusing on dark spots with the corners of my blades, if I see any imperfections I'm just going ahead and cleaning them up. So now I just took my, my 1.5 guard with my lever closed and basically I'm just shortening around the lineup because if the hair is much shorter it's much easier for you to, to line your client up because you know what waves the hair tends to curl up so if you do shorten the hair in that area it makes the, the lineup much easier. As you can see I jumped onto my wall um, detailers. I always start my lineups from the center of my client's head and I move either to the left or the right really doesn't matter it all depends on your preference but i always just prefer to start in the center use that as my guide and move either to the left or the right of the client's head now all i'm gonna do is i'm basically lining my client's beard up he didn't really want much taken off of his beard so all I'm likely doing is I'm lining him up around the cheek area I don't put too much work into the cheeks because I do come in with a razor and clean the cheek area but uh, below, the, on, uh, below at the neck area 
and below the chin definitely clean up with the detailers so now I, I just add or I apply some shave gel basically I start from the C cup and I make sure that the C cup flows straight into my client's beard and as you can see when I am using my razor and I'm shaving down with my left hand I am pulling the skin in the opposite direction that I am shaving in and you do that to get a much cleaner and closer shave So now I just went ahead and picked my client's beard out to use an afro comb and all I'm gonna do is I'm just lightly gonna, my client really didn't want much length taken off so all I did was all the loose hair, all the hair that's standing out of place, all I did was took my wow magic clip because it's nice and light, that's also a plus side about the wow cordless brand, they're super light so when you are doing freehand work like this it makes it um, so much easier to do so. Now I'm gonna go ahead with my scissors and all I'm doing is I'm gently cutting off any hairs that I see standing up loosely that my, uh, my clippers didn't grab. Now for my client's lineup I'm just adding some enhancements but with the enhancements I'm literally just putting it on the side. Um, I really don't, I'm not much of a fan or a big fan but yeah my client didn't have a cut in a really long time so I wanted to make it as fresh as possible. I wanted to make sure that it's popping. So basically as you see, as I apply the enhancement, what I do is I come through with a brush, so I lightly apply the enhancement, I don't put too much, and then with the brush I basically I blend it in to my client's hair so it doesn't look as artificial. So I just take my razor, I line up again, and as you can see I take a wet wipe and I basically make it blend into my client's hair so that it can look as natural as possible. Next up I, I grab my wild foil shavers and I basically run it across my client's head right through just for any hairs that are standing up. Then lastly um, for the lineup I want to make sure my client's lineup is super crispy. Grab my wild detailers once again and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go over his lineup for the last time. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and straight. I'm grabbing, I'm turning my clip around and as you can see I see some hair standing up so all I'm doing is I'm making sure that all the hair is laid. So shout out to Shido, he brought through this amazing gel pomade, he actually left this tub with me. Super dope, I've never seen it before but super, super, super dope. Hook me up with this tub, I wanna get more, I actually wanna start selling it in the shop. So just let me know in the comments if you're interested in this pomade and then I'll start hooking it up, um, start stocking it up and then you guys can come through and get some pomade. It's really, really fresh. So yeah guys, this is Shiro before we got the cut in. This is a nine week wolf and this is how Mr. Shiro looks straight after the cut. Looking super fresh, we did a number two right around the number three, around the crown and as you can see Mr. Shiro is feeling super fresh super and he's looking super fresh as well and um he was really happy with this cut another one for the camera <laughs> so yeah guys if you are new to my channel please go ahead and hit the subscribe button definitely leave a like behind and most importantly leave a comment and let me know how you feel about the content it was your boy enrico the barber i hope you guys enjoyed until the next one peace